Lincoln Raider basketball on 96.3 WLCN and WLCNonline.com is brought to you by Grau Incorporated, Schneider Chiropractic, Headline Salon, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Fifth Street Food Mart, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, The Carpet House, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln IGA, Lincoln College, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, St. Clair's Manor, Lincoln Park District, Grimaldi Law Office, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, Jim Examus Ford Lincoln, Stacy's Family Pharmacy, Lincoln Dare, Eaton Corporation, Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, Lincoln Printers, Chicago Street Reynolds, and by Four Corners Lube. Sanders' mother and father, I believe, and all his family heading out to the court now. Is it just me, Austin Kirby, you know, one of his grandsons has played for him along with Bryson out there. I still expect Austin to lay somebody out on the screen. <laughs> I mean, he just looks like he could still. Well, and, and you expect, you know, Greg to pick up the basketball in two to three or something, <laughs> too, and uh, something we're getting ready for, and I think we'll take the, uh, take the headphones off, and hopefully everybody that's listening with us can take a listen with, uh, with this. Yep, here we go. So here is the ceremony.
But I think first of all, it's important to recognize that when one of your peers writes a letter and asks that you be recognized, that you demonstrated the leadership and the values that many people appreciate. We received a letter five years ago from Ed Moore, who was a teacher and a coach here at the high school, asking that we do something for Go Jab. Well, like I said, that was five years ago, and we sat on it for a while, and then Neil talked to us about his plans to retire from teaching, but wanted to stay on as a basketball coach. And then we lost Mr. Knox to the IHSA. And Neil had the credentials to fill in as athletic director. And as Mr. Pelfer said, he's serving in that capacity now and doing just as good a job at that as he did as a teacher and a basketball coach. But I think what the school board realizes about Neil is that he doesn't just care about the basketball team cares about every student in the high school. So Neil, wherever he's hiding at, you come forward, please.
just a matter of uh, housekeeping here. The plaque that we gave Neil will be hung right outside the door next to the Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium plaque. It will be forever a reminder of Neil here. And we will have a reception for Neil at a later date. They have family plans after the game this evening. So uh, we will honor Neil with a reception at a later date. I want to thank all of you for coming out and supporting Lincoln Community High School. Thank you. Josh, the ceremony now, uh, naming, this is now uh, Coach Neil Alexander Court at Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium, and uh, a very, uh, very dignified, very typical uh, ceremony that you would expect if uh, Coach Alexander's involved. Uh, it wasn't that he felt uncomfortable with it, uh, but like he said at the end, let's play basketball. That's what, when he woke up this morning, he That's was thinking, he to do. how do we break their press? Yeah. We're going to run and jump. How do we keep that way? What are they going to do? Did the, did the, uh, the scouting report work? Is it going to work? Are we, <laughs> are we prepared enough? And uh, uh, we'll find out, you know, soon enough here for Raylor basketball. But, yeah, Coach Alexander, as he said, his uh, mom and dad are out there, um, grandsons who he coached, which is doesn't yeah. always happen, you know. Yeah. And, of course, uh, his two sons, Greg and Jeff, his, his daughter, Tammy, is, of course, a wife of, I think, 45 years. And I was telling somebody after the uh, radio show today that a lot of people don't realize the the, the back end of the Raylor program and, and what Coach Alexander, the time that he spent. Jumping center will be Drew Bacon and 6'3 senior Jordan Knight. The opening tip is kicked around a little bit. And it is Chicago Harlan, the Falcons, who come away with it, moving right to left here at Roy S. Anderson. Yeah, the, the Falcons out of the Chicago Public League, and you talked a little bit about their schedule earlier on, Jeff. Simeon, uh, King, who was a power uh, back in 10, 15 years ago. These guys play a tough schedule. Uh, so the Railers, uh, maybe the atmosphere a little bit uh, uh, daunting for them, but uh, the Railer competition, the Railer team, probably not. Down in the corner to Tim Turner, a 6'2 senior. Working around on the right side to 6'2 junior Ryan Robinson. Now holding on top is 5'10 sophomore Decarius Davis. Same coach for the sophomores is running the varsity here uh, for the uh, Falcons. So uh, they're, uh, they showed some patience in the sophomore game and so far a minute into the game and the Falcons yet to, uh, to take a shot. You wonder if their coach is seeing, let's see if they can play defense for a long time. They didn't do their scouting if they want to see if we can play defense. Yeah, we can, so. play, we can play some defense now, and it's a little bit different probably than what they're accustomed to, but uh, their head coach is uh, ironing out the details here and getting something rolling now. 6.40 left in the first quarter. Haven't even looked at the basket yet. Lawrence back on top to Turner at the volleyball line. Skips it down to the baseline. Robinson kicks back out now to Lawrence. I would say they're holding for the last shot, but I don't think that's, that's the case. Relatively impossible here <laughs> in the first quarter, but uh, if you were a shot clock, uh, a guy that wants a shot clock in high school basketball, then you are uh, pleading your case right now as a turnover for the Falcons on a travel. Railers with the ball now. Turner took to uh, drive down the lane and took a little hop step and got called for the steps. Rails with their first possession. Grunder on the right wing, back on top to Cannon. Cannon out of Bowers. Titus barks out the signal. High post to Drew, back out to Grunder, swing it quickly to Bowers, now over to Sloan. Yeah, and the Falcons in a, almost like a matchup 1-2-2. Titus' is three is no good, but Bacon grabs the rebound. Isaiah fires for three. That's no good. Still fighting for the rebound. It's Harlan with it. Turner over to Lawrence. 
See if they can hold it for another over a minute and a half. Nope, this time they fire one up from the right side. Three is no good. Back rim now. Isaiah tips it to himself, but it's tracked down by Turner. Isaiah tipped it a little bit too far, and now the Falcons with numbers. Now, now they'll slow thing down to Davis. get back, and you said Isaiah tipped that back and thought he could tip it to himself on a run out, but uh, the Falcons got back on defense rather quickly and then uh, got back here to run some offense. Robinson back to Turner. Down in the corner to Davis. Davis's three on the right side is up and good. Dakarius Davis, the first points of the contest. Three minutes into the game. Railers still looking for their first points. Grunder. I think if you're the Railers too, a zone by, by the Falcons, you can't be complacent and try and just continue to shoot the ball from, uh, from the three-point line. You got to find a way to uh, to get it inside. Isaiah's pass, trying to find Bacon on the baseline, but his pass hit the backboard, never got to Drew. So another turnover gives it back to the Falcons. 4:20 left in the first. Harlan with a three nothing advantage. And they've shown that they will be very patient and try and find the shot that uh, the Falcons wanted. The coaching staff wants over. They're on their sidelines, so they uh, continue to, to move the ball, pass it around the perimeter, and then uh, look to penetrate from there. Turner drove in, tried to dump it down to a teammate, but it's taken away by the Railers. See if the Railers can convert, and a foul is going to be whistled. That will go against the 5'9 junior Mario Lawrence for the slap on Isaiah. First foul of the contest, 3.55 left in quarter number one. Railers down 3-0. Of course, it's our first chance on the air also to uh, congratulate Isaiah Bowers. Isaiah, the lone railer named to the all-tournament team down right. at Collinsville. Yeah, we found that out after uh, after the championship game, which uh, the Railers finished third down at Collinsville. And Bowers, right on cue, hits it from 15 to get the Railers on the board. Now 3-2, three, three, three minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first on a low-scoring game. Isaiah, the leading scorer for the Railers, coming into the contest. Coming in at 17-1 a game. Turner, right in front of Coach Alexander on the far side. Three on the way, kind of a line drive, no good. Rebound down to Harlan, but it's swatted out of his hands. And Titus out of there with it over to Isaiah. Railers got to try and find Bowers back in the middle of that zone, right at the free throw line where, where he's really good at. And the Railers look like you're going to set up a uh, zone set here against Isaiah turns from about nine feet. That'd be a good spot. And connects. Railers up 4-3. Well, we've seen teams do that to us, uh, especially the Southeasts in the years gone by. Three on the way. That's up off the front of the rim. No good. If Isaiah can get there open all night, good things happen. Yeah, you're right. He's, he's really good from that area. 10 to 15 feet. He catches it real quick. He's got good elevation on his jump shot. And, uh, you know, more importantly, it goes in most of the time. So um, that, that's where the Railers want to get it now. Looks like the Falcons are going to go try and go man or some sort of a matchup here. Something a little bit different to throw at the Railers. Two minutes to go. Pass, fast pace, first quarter. Bowers with all four for the Railers, and Lincoln's on top, 4-3. Over to Cannon. Titus near side to Grunder, back to Titus. Titus looks to make the move down the lane. Bullet pass to Drew off the glass and good. Yeah, nice pass by Cannon. Got in the middle of that lane, and, and the, the penetration. We've seen the, the aggressive play from Cannon in the last several games. Really started in that first game in Collinsville, Jeff, where I think he went off for about 20-22. Uh, that night and, and it has kind of kept going. Uh, didn't have as good a nights the last two or three, or actually three and four games of Collinsville, but there he didn't score, but uh, did a good job of getting in the middle and then found Bacon cutting to the basket. And we've seen that early on in the first quarter. Drew's been hanging out right there on the baseline. And uh, from our vantage point, it looks like it's open. Every, yeah, every time. Right. Minute 15 to go, Railers up 6-3. Falcons with the basketball. Knight. Back to Lawrence. The near side to Davis. He has their only points with a three to get the scoring started. Down to a minute to go. Get 
And we know the Railers can play defense for a long time. Well, and you can leave them out there. You know, they're so far from the uh, court. I think as, as the more you let them do probably what they're not accustomed to doing, is they start to turn the ball over as they did there again. Yeah. The Railers with a, uh, a defensive stop and a turnover by the Falcons, but they continue to hold the ball. Uh, I, I think they want to get up and down the floor and run. 30 seconds to go. Railers an opportunity at the final shot of the first quarter. Grunder on the right wing. Back now to Titus. Top of the key thought about the three. Didn't take it. Drives in over to Grunder. Grunder right side three on the way. In and out. Rebound down tonight for the Falcons. They've got 18 seconds to cut into this Railer lead. Yeah, good look by uh, Grunder from the, from the wing right in front of us. And a nice penetration again by Camden to get in the middle of that lane and then kicked it out for a three. In and out for Grunder. Down to four. Got to look at something. Turner drives through, throws it up off the glass, won't go down. That's the end of the first. Lincoln on top. It's Lincoln six. Harlan three. Back with the second quarter in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Low scoring first quarter back here. Railers and Falcons. Railers have the basketball. Bowers, Cannon, Grunder. Drew Bacon, Isaac Dewberry into the contest for the first time, replacing Tate Sloan. Bowers wide open for a three, doesn't take it. Seems like uh, Harlan's kind of extended the pressure a little bit now. Yeah, and there they tried to run and jump uh, to the railer so they didn't get anything set. Grunder in the lane from 10 feet is good. And Grunder! Looks like the middle of that zone is open too, Jeff. That time Grunder got in the middle there where Bowers had some success early in that first quarter from about eight, 10 feet. And uh, those two guys are really good from that, from that distance. 7.20 left in the first half. Harlan scored the first three of the night. Railers have run off eight in a row. Got a five point advantage. Robinson on the right side, watched by Bacon and Dewberry, tipped away, tracked down by Droop, not couldn't save it in bounds. Well, Dewberry with some quick action tonight, the sophomore Where's the number five off the bench? Harlan looking to inbound. Gets it out to Lawrence. In the lane, Turner tried to dump it off to a teammate, swatted away again. Yeah, the fourth, fourth turnover now for the Falcons, and they've tried to attack that middle of the Railer 1 2 2. And once they get there, I think they've overpassed a few times, which has led to turnovers. Railer uh, defense active in the middle with their hands. Dewberry on the right side. Thought about pulling up from 15. Now he's picked up his dribble. Isaiah right side three. Missed it off the glass. Rebound to Harlan. Up to Lawrence. Lawrence with the bounce over on the right side. Davis now back to Lawrence. Six and a half to go first half. That railer lead stays at 8-3. Down to Turner. Dewberry comes in from the back. Just took, it, just from took it from him. Yeah, yeah, just ripped it right out of his hands. And the sophomore uh, aggressive on that trap. And Dewberry just ripped it away. So does he get rewarded from three? Back rim, no. High for the rebound is Davis for the Falcons. Yeah, the Raiders 0 for 5 from three to start this game. And, and they've got to go to where they've had success, which is right in the middle of that lane, right in the middle of that zone from the Falcons. Uh, not hitting from three so far. Have they missed from inside? No, 4 of 4 from the, from the inside, from the two-point range. They're 4 of 4, 0 of 4, 0 of 5 from three. 5.40 to go. And Harlan's shown they're willing to be very patient. Three from the right side by Robinson. No good, but it's rebounded by Knight. Gets it back to Lawrence. His jumper is no good. And we're going to have a knocked out of bounds by Harlan on the rebound. Railer basketball. Colton Holiday, the 6'5 junior in. Drew Bacon heads to the bench. So you yeah. got Bowers, Cannon, Grunder, Dewberry, and Holiday. And you've talked about how athletic this team is. Yeah, you're right. I think this is the most athletic team the Railers can put out there uh, at this point with uh, Doc Holiday coming in and Bowers. And you got Grunder. Bowers dumps it over to Colton. Colton got fouled. He's going to go to the line. And you talked about with um, Chicago Harlan overpassing there. I thought one, too. Isaiah. Holiday, Holiday was wide open. I mean, Isaiah could have taken it. Right. And we still get uh, shots out. Still get the free throws from Holiday, but again, Bowers uh, a, an opportunity to get to the basket and, and shoot a layup. Interesting to see when Jermaine comes in against this zone. 
Uh, maybe an opportunity where the Railers can throw that lob that we've seen several times before this season uh, and set a few screens down low when we throw the lob up to Jermaine and he finishes with a dunk. Holiday misses the first. Second one on the way for the lefty. That's no good as well. Free throw troubles already in 2018. Try to get it back. Uh, tipped away by Dewberry. Boy, uh, Isaac's had some quick hands here tonight. Making an impression early. Dewberry getting his hands on a lot of basketballs. Holiday had it on the baseline. Tried to make a move. And then he fumbled it and bounced it on the baseline. So another turnover by the Railers. Yeah, it looked like Holiday had a nice lane to the basket, too, along that sideline, but just tried to go before he had the catch. And the Railers would get a turnover. Into the contest for the first time is Treshawn Dobin, six foot sophomore. 440 left. We're still at 8 3. You've not turned into a soccer match. No, this is, uh, <laughs> you're right. You have a football score before it's over. Also in is 5'6 freshman Eddie Niles Jr. And I think that 5'6 might be a stretch. Yeah, if he's much <laughs> taller than my fourth grader Carson. Uh, <laughs> they've stretched it out to some of the Coach Alexander heights when he puts it in the program. Over on the right side now, Niles fires a long three. What in the world was that? That was from almost half court, but they get the rebound, and the 15-footer from Tobin is good. Well, maybe it was a set play to fire up a 40-footer. Well, a lot of times those teams uh, will throw it up on the bank board and try and go get it, and that time Harlan shot it from almost touching hands with uh, Coach Alexander over there, but they were able to get the offensive rebound and then put it in. 8-5, three and a half to go. Grunder to Isaiah in the lane. Kicks back out. Dewberry's three on the way. Rattles in and out. Rebound to Knight for Boy, the Falcons. Had a lot of those in the sophomore game we watched yeah. too, Jeff. A lot of in and out threes, a lot of in and out shots for the Railers, and it started here for the varsity as well. A game that uh, Harlan was able to come back and actually beat the sophomores 34-32 tonight. Down to the three-minute mark. Three-point lead for the Railers at 8-5. Lawrence has picked up his dribble now on the near side to Dobin. And again, uh, right now, Lincoln letting them do what they want. Uh, and Harlan really not pushing the issue. Niles right side three, back rim no good. Titus there with the rebound. Yeah, and this he must be able to shoot because he's taking some long ones already. Isaiah the lane opens up the left-handed layup rolls off again. Rebound Holiday almost had it, but it's Harlan that comes away with it. And then Isaiah comes from the backside and steals it right back. Nobody for the Falcons helped their teammate out to let him know that Isaiah was coming. Takes it down the lane and misses the layup again. So here comes the Falcons going the other way. Lawrence, the lefty, he misses the layup. Rebound to Dewberry. Yeah, I think uh, you, know, you get to playing so slow and then you turn up the speed. And uh, Bowers had a couple of opportunities there where he normally makes. Isaiah turns from 15. That's going to be no good. Dewberry high for the rebound, swatted away. And the Falcons come away with it. Railers are getting some good looks. They're just not going down. And uh, we said that a lot uh, in the uh, first half against MacArthur. Niles, three. That's going to go good. Timeout taken by Harlan. Just a 30-second timeout. And the three from Eddie Niles in the right corner ties this game at eight with a minute 35 to go. Uh, so what are we... I, I don't know if it's what we're not doing right because we're getting the shots. It's just I know sometimes the shots don't fall because we saw what happened in Collinsville. The same shots they were missing in the first half go down in the second, and things look so much better. Yeah, you're right, and, and you know, just not making shots now, and and uh, you know, we've turned the ball over a couple times. We've gotten to the basket a couple times and not been able to to convert. So. I think you don't want to speed up if you don't have to. And uh, a couple times there, a couple last possessions where Bowers tried to be a little bit faster than maybe 
he's accustomed or, or comfortable playing, but um, you know, at some point you get tired of playing a slow game and you got to speed it up. So after the timeout, Railers on the floor, Bacon, Bowers, Dewberry, Sloan, and Cannon. Into the front court from Sloan to Bowers, now near side to Cannon. The senior pitches it over to the sophomore. Dewberry tried to make a move, but it was Knight who reached in, and just like Isaac's been doing to the Falcons tonight, they reached in and just stripped it away. Yeah, they took it right from him as uh, Dewberry was getting ready to make that move, going baseline with the right hand, and uh, the Falcons just a little quicker. Down to a minute, tied at eight, first half. Now Lawrence standing right near the timeline. Over to Dobin. And they dump it in, look, trying to go to the high post. And I'm not sure Robinson was ready for it because they threw it right over his head. Another turnover gives the Railers a chance. Cannon, back to Sloan, 30 seconds. Back now to Sloan. Over to Dewberry. Double team comes to Isaac, over to Cannon. Now Sloan in the right corner. We're down to 20 seconds. Inside, Bacon thought about the shot. Kicks back out to Dewberry, now to Cannon. Railers are going to wait a little bit longer on this shot than they did in the first quarter. Sloan, we're down to seven. Titus fakes it, drives down the lane, opens up with the left hand, won't go down, but Titus gets the foul called, and he will go to the line shooting two. Yeah, nice uh, patience by the Railers, as we've seen a lot of patience here in the first half. Just eight to eight, and Cannon going to the free throw line with two free throws, 4.2 seconds left. Titus at the line. A 72% free throw shooter on the season. First one on the way, off no good. Four point two left. Second one, that one goes good. Titus his first point of the night. Railers with a nine eight lead. Niles, half court, high archer on the way, falls short. Our score at halftime. Lincoln, 9, Harlan, 8. We'll be back with the Ground Incorporated and Schneider Chiropractic Center halftime show in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. 